After like 87 years of waiting, the Nintendo Switch finally got a little bit of first-party GameCube action with Super Mario Sunshine appearing on the 3D All-Stars compilation, but given the fact that Nintendo's only begrudgingly letting the game survive for just six months, I'd say that all my points in the video about why Nintendo doesn't want 64 GameCube or Wii games coming to the Switch ring all the more true. But you know what? I think the above-average-sized end's really silly for having this kind of mindset, because while some of us may be sick of getting older games copy and pasted onto the Switch, the rest of us kind of love the idea of having portable versions of our favorite games, and if Nintendo's gonna port the entire Wii EU library over for games that are only like four years old, and they might as well port GameCube games over from like 20 years ago that could actually use the HD visual upgrades, and I'm pretty sure most people would agree with me, except for that redneck dude Carl who works at Whitley's Heaton and Coolin. So the real question at hand isn't necessarily should Nintendo remaster GameCube games, but rather which ones? Well, seeing as Super Mario Sunshine was already remastered, albeit for a limited time, we can go ahead and scratch that one off the list, as well as an ass load of other third-party games that are already on the eShop, along with Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, because while I'd personally love to see those games show up on the Switch someday, they were already remastered on the Wii U, and therefore don't really have anything unique to offer that we don't already have, and to be honest, I don't really mind playing these on the Wii U that much. Not at the expense of remastering a new GameCube game, anyway. But aside from that small handful of games I just mentioned, I've got 11 more in mind that'll tell my inside source at Nintendo to greenlight for remasters, and to find out what they are, make sure to sit back in your ancestors' priceless family heirloom, press the subscribe button if you haven't already, and allow me, 2020's Little League Boxing Champion Cameron All One Word, to tell you 11 GameCube games that need remasters the most in 2021 and beyond. Number 11, Luigi's Mansion. Kid can't even read. Two. Alright, so I know this one should probably be higher on the list, but seeing as how we just got a 3D remaster in 2017 on the 3DS, I just don't think it should be prioritized as much. I mean, I guess you could make the argument that since most of the work's already been done important in the game with the control options from Luigi's Mansion 2 and other bonuses on top of that, then that's all the more reason to port it over to the Switch, since all they've really got to do at this point is put a coat of HD paint over the game, but meh, even though most people skipped this game when it was on the 3DS since the Switch was already a thing, I still think other games should be prioritized first, because it's not Nintendo's fault that people turn their backs on what could be Nintendo's final dedicated handheld after all the good times a dang thing provided us. I mean, how dare you all abandon an obsolete gaming platform with really dated graphics. Number 10, F-Zero GX. Truth be told, I'm not really that into the F-Zero series myself, but I can definitely see why fans are fiending over a new one, and given that a brand new game would be way cooler than a GameCube port, I had to leave this towards the bottom of the list, since I'd actually bet like 10 bucks that a new game's actually what's gonna end up happening, but if Nintendo really insists on not touching this series due to the lack of new ideas like Miyamoto once said like a complete jabroni, then they should really at least consider bringing F-Zero GX over to the Switch with some added online support and maybe a few other extra features and call it a day. Then when the game sells out the ass, then they'll see that people actually want a new one. Number 9, Cubivore. Alright, so I know that nobody gives a monkey's nutsack about Cubivore, so to avoid driving viewers off like that time I talked about Okami Den for longer than 10 seconds in a Nintendo DS video, let's just say that it was a GameCube exclusive made by Atlas of all people, where you play as a cube that's gotta eat other cubes so it could evolve and be at the top of the cube food chain, and yeah, this game really is just as weird as it sounds. And while it may not be the best game of all time, even on the GameCube, I think it's a shame that more people don't know about it, so it'd be pretty cool if there were another way to play it outside of paying way too much money for a copy on eBay. Number 8, Wario World. Sure, Mario might be Nintendo's greatest platforming series, but I still think Wario platformers are criminally underrated. Like, seriously, if you haven't played these games, then you should actually go to jail and be placed on a registry so I can know if you move into my neighborhood. And if I have my way and become president, then that's exactly what's gonna happen. So to avoid that, Nintendo ought to start remastering these games sometime soon. And if you ask me, Wario World on GameCube is as good a place to start as any. Number 7, Kirby Air Ride. In a perfect world, Kirby Air Ride should probably just get a full-on sequel, but given the amount of effort that'd take just to have another racing game in the Nintendo Switch that still wouldn't compare to Mario Kart 8, I think Nintendo should just remaster the GameCube version and call it a day, because in the end, it's always nice to have some variety rather than just playing the same handful of kart racers over and over again. I just don't think it's worth the effort of making an entirely new game is all. Number 6, Chibi Robo Plug Into Adventure. Normally, this is the part in a video where I'd call you all ingrates for not supporting such a cult classic, but to tell you the truth, I've never really played this game that much myself for all that long. In fact, I'm not even sure if I have it myself anymore, but that's all the more reason for Nintendo to give this game another chance of the remaster. You pretty much play as this tiny robot who does a bunch of housework for humans while making sure not to run out of batteries, and apparently this series lost its way in the GameCube like another game I'm going to be talking about in a little bit, but like I said, I wouldn't really know anything about that since I've never really played these games all that much myself. However, if Nintendo doesn't feel like making a new Chibi Robo game that brings the series back to its roots for whatever reason, then why not just give fans a classic that they love? And if the series does plan to go back to the basics, then remastering the first game would probably be the best possible appetizer, so either way, this game needs to come to Nintendo's little hybrid that could. Number 5, Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. 
This right here is the first ever M-rated game published by Nintendo, and since they don't seem to be too keen on publishing very many more, then why not just republish the same one and give the Switch another horror game, because the best part about Eternal Darkness is that the GameCube was the only console it's ever appeared on, and since most people have never played this game, it'd certainly feel a lot more fresh in the 78th version of Resident Evil 4. Number 4. Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes Metal Gear Solid's always been Sony's little baby, but when the series creator Hideo Kojima wanted to impress his son by having Snake appear in Smash Bros, the GameCube ended up getting the exclusive Twin Snakes, which is a remake of the original Metal Gear Solid on the PS1 with the look and feel of Metal Gear Solid 2 on the PS2. And for reasons that I'd imagine involve Pachinko, Konami's never re-released this game ever since, and I think that's a damn shame. Number 3. Fire Emblem Path of Radiance the best part about Fire Emblem games is that since they're strategy RPGs that mainly focus on gameplay above all else, they don't really need graphics all that much, especially when they never really tried looking realistic that much in the first place. So given how popular the franchise has become in recent years, I have no idea why Nintendo hasn't ported the entire series over to the Switch at this point. But regardless of why they haven't, I think they should start remastering them now so the Smash Bros fans could at least have a chance to actually play the game where Ike originally came from without having to pay like $8 billion on eBay. Personally, I think the Fire Emblem games on the 3DS and 3 Houses are better as a whole due to all the extra stuff you could do, but as far as the actual combat goes, which is really the meat and potatoes of the entire series, Path of Radiance is every bit as good as any other game in the franchise. Number 2. Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door Alright, so the idea of remaking the Thousand Year Door altogether is pretty popular, but when there's almost nothing about the game that can be improved outside of converting the graphics into high definition, I think it'd be a complete waste of time, because at best, the game would only be like 10% better than the original, and at worst, it wouldn't be as good. So why take a chance on a full remake when a remaster would be a lot easier to do and far more likely to please the fans anyway? I mean, modern Paper Mario fans don't even know what the classic series was even like outside of hearing other YouTubers talk about it as if it was some kind of myth or legend or something like that, but even though I think the modern games are way better than people give them credit for, I still do think the first two games in the entire series of the cream of the crop with all the unique character designs, traditional turn-based battle systems with experience points and badges, and of course the superb stories that were far more interesting and memorable. Apparently Shigeru Miyamoto started crying when he found out that his characters were being given unique personalities, names, and designs even though it was a spin-off series, and ever since then he's just been stifling the Paper Mario franchise and making sure that the games are never like the first two ever again, but hopefully that doesn't mean that he can't at least let fans enjoy the first two titles in the series in the forms of HD remasters, otherwise I'm going back to Japan myself to spank his bare butt back and balls. Watch your back, Miyamoto. Watch your back. Number 1. Metroid Prime... Uh, trilogy. Alright, so I know the Metroid Prime 3 and the full trilogy compilation were both Wii titles, but when we've already gotten the entire trilogy on the Wii, it's not like Nintendo could ever get away with releasing separate physical copies of the first two games ever again, but on the other hand, they did charge an extra 10 bucks for a Wii U port on the Switch, so I guess anything's possible, but if I were in charge, and Lord knows that I will be someday, then I think bringing the entire Metroid Prime trilogy to the Switch would be the way to go, especially since it's been rumored for so long. In case you haven't played these games yourself, and I'd imagine that there's actually a pretty good chance that you haven't, then you really owe it to yourself to check them out, because out of all the video game franchises that transition from two dimensions into three, I'd say that Metroid's pretty high up the ladder. Outside of parts of Metroid Prime 3, the feeling of being stranded on an eerie alien planet's pulled off to perfection, with the exploration and puzzles feeling so damn rewarding. Plus, it doesn't hurt to have some really fun combat sprinkled throughout the entire games either, and the best part of all, at least to me anyway, is that none of these three games ever overstay their welcome. Most people seem to be pretty fond of games that are 100 plus hours, and even I am every now and then, but you know what? Sometimes it's nice to just be able to play through some games that don't take that much longer than 10 hours or so and move on to whatever's next, which is why the Metroid Prime trilogy is perfect, because if you want your games to be longer, then you can just play all three of these back to back. Back. So really, it's a win-win for everybody, and I wish Nintendo would just go ahead and put this out sooner or later. But anyway, that's my list. Pretty sure I'm gonna get a lot of flack for leaving Mario Kart Double Dash and Smash Melee out of the video, but while those would be pretty cool, I don't think they'd bring that much more to the Switch that the console doesn't already have. And besides, Uncle Saki'd probably never allow an older Smash game to take the spotlight away from Ultimate after all the work he's put into it. But beyond that, let me know what you thought about the list or any games I might have missed in the comments below, and as always, I'll try my goddamnedest to respond to everybody at some point in time. But let me tell you, if there's two people who'd have made excellent GameCube games if they weren't human beings, then it would definitely be today's patrons of the day, Alyssa EasyVet and Jiznoo. If you want to be badasses like these two, then consider supporting FU Game Crew on Patreon for loot boxes and silly rewards in the mail. Send pictures or videos if you're rocking merch if you want to make cameos in my videos, and follow me on Twitch if you ever want to hang out whenever I play video games sometimes. My name's Cameron All One Word, and I'll see you next time. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty, thank you for your support.